Good morning. Please pray with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of life. We remember the Maytox family and pray for comfort. We pray for the Bryant family and for the families that died in that crash. We pray for strength and for comfort. And as we share your word this morning, may your spirit bring it to life among us. In Jesus' name, amen. A friend recently shared a conversation that they're having in their small group. She said, we've known God as friend for so long. We're now wrestling with perceiving him as king. I thought that was powerful. They have a desire that many of us share, which is to get a deeper understanding of God, of who he is and what that means for us as individuals and and as a community. As human beings, we are incapable of understanding the full extent of who God is. But in this text of James 1, 12 to 18, I'll read in a, a few minutes, James describes God. He describes him as generous, as perfect, unchanging, holy. This God, our King, by his very nature has nothing to do with evil. He is the supreme God. That is his identity. James 1, 12 to 18 says, Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then when that desire has grown, has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth. He gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Generous, perfect, unchanging, holy. That is his identity. Over the last few years, we've seen a renewed interest in royalty. We've seen an increased demand for news about the British royal family, but also in movies like The Lion King, Wakanda, and a few others. A scene that usually cuts across these movies is one where the older person, usually the king, calls the younger person, usually a prince, uh, who is struggling with a difficult issue. The prince is usually afraid to face this issue. He's running away from it or has excuses for his behavior. Yet rarely, rarely will the king solve the problem. Instead, he reminds the prince of who he is by very nature of his birth, the power the strength, the dignity. The king reminds the prince of his identity. James reminds us of our place in God's creation, the apex, the first fruits. We stand above all of creation, and as Christians, we've been born anew and hold the honor of being called children of this king of kings. Our identity is of value because of who we belong to. James wants the church to hold themselves to a higher standard, a higher moral standard because of who they are, because of who we are in Christ. 
we hold ourselves to a higher moral standard because of our royal identity. Yet just like the princes and princesses in those movies, we still face temptation every day. We're usually afraid to face the problem, we run away from it, or have excuses for our behavior. In fact, as Christians, we sometimes claim that God is tempting us. James rejects, he strongly rejects the idea that God would use sin to tempt people. In verse 13, he says, no one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. God is holy. God is good. God has nothing to do with evil. Instead, James calls out our desires as a source of temptation. In verse 14, he says, but one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. He paints this picture of wanting, of craving something that you know is wrong, but you just won't let go. You think it will bring pleasure and fulfillment, the pleasure and fulfillment that you seek. In verse 15, he says, when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And that sin, when fully grown, gives birth to death. It may bring short-term pleasure, but over time, those desires eventually lead to spiritual death. James wants us to see that we have a choice. We can choose to follow those desires that please God and bring us life through His Spirit. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. James calls us to practice the fruit of self-control. Choose to walk away. Choose to resist. Choose to stand in the face of opposition. For those who stand and endure, a crown of life is promised. Friends, as we focus on being devoted to God this semester, my prayer is that we're reminded of our strength. My prayer is that we're reminded of our worth. My prayer is that we're reminded of our power. That power that comes from the Spirit of God, alive in us, available to us. Many times the princes and princesses need to be reminded of their royal identity. So I say to you, brothers and sisters, I say to us all, Remember, remember, remember who you are in Christ. Will you pray with me? Our God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of being called your children. We thank you for the identity that holds power. We thank you for your spirit. May we go out in the knowledge and conviction of our place in your story. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.